All right, so our meeting is now being recorded. I'd like to thank those who are logging into our session today. Looks like we have a few more people joining, so we'll give everybody a chance to get logged in, uh, and then we'll just get started in a couple of moments. All right, so I have begun our recording for today's session, so I will go ahead and get started. For those of you who are logging in at this time, you'll see the conference number located in the top right of the screen. You can dial in, enter the conference code, and then press star six to mute your line. That would be much appreciated. And with that said, we'll get started with today's session. I'd like to take a moment to introduce us. My name is Jacqueline Specht. My company is Focus Connect, and I'm one of the hosts of today's sessions. I also have with me today Jason Van Gotten with Colorado Restaurant Insurance Group. And the purpose of our session today is to really increase restaurant awareness of cybersecurity risks. We encourage restaurant owners to take an active role in minimizing the possibility of a data breach. So I have introduced myself, but I'd like to give Jason a moment just to say hello and tell everyone a little bit more about what the Colorado Restaurant Association has to offer with respect to the insurance sector. Thanks, Jackie. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. We will be in touch with each of you to set up an appointment to perform a free cyber risk analysis of your current restaurant after this session today. As Jackie said, my name is Jason Van Gotten. I work as a specialty lines producer for Colorado Restaurant Insurance. My focus is specifically cyber and employment practices liability. We take a consultative approach to identifying and addressing the unique business challenges food service operators face. I'll turn this back over to Jackie. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. So for today's sessions, we'll review a few key considerations to help your business stay out of the hot skillet. First of all, understanding PCI compliancy, what does it mean? We'll talk a little bit about proper network configuration. We'll also discuss secure usage of applications like digital Wi-Fi marketing tools or mobile devices in the workplace. We'll talk about protection of owner devices and the constantly evolving threat landscape of cybersecurity today as it stands. And then we'll wrap up with talking about why it's important to protect your business with insurance. So we hope this uh, session will be highly informative to you and we'll get things started. So understanding what is PCI compliancy and what does it mean? Well, the payment, uh, the definition is the, the payment card industry data security standard PCI DSS is a set of security standards designed to ensure that all companies accept, process, store, and transmit credit card information and maintain a secure environment. However, achieving PCI compliancy involves a combination of different things that need to take place by the restaurant owner to be sure that you're providing a secure network environment. So let's talk about network configuration. A common misconception by restaurant owners is the assumption that the POS company is responsible for ensuring PCI compliancy of the restaurant owner. They are only uh, responsible for a portion of your compliancy. So I really want to highlight the other things that restaurant owners are responsible for themselves. POS companies carry the responsibility of encrypting their data going into and out of their credit card processing and data storage systems. However, the POS company itself is not responsible for the security of the overall network and the other traffic flowing across that network. Another common mistake is an improperly configured network. I see this very often. And many times I'll ask restaurant owners, what type of firewall do you have? And the common answer is, I don't know. Um, the other common answer that I get is that Comcast takes care of that for me. Well, the truth is that Comcast does not provide you with a firewall. They provide you with a router when you sign up for their service. And the standard business router 
does not provide the same type of security as an actual firewall itself. Now, if you have a firewall, there's another set of questions that you could be asking yourself. Who is maintaining it regularly? Who is updating that actual firewall and protecting me from the latest threats? Um, it's important to have someone reviewing and managing that firewall on a daily basis. Um, and that's something that a service that we do for all the restaurants uh, that we maintain firewalls for. It's wonderful and, and it lets me know, is there anybody doing anything malicious? Is there credit card skimming or any kind of strange broadcasts on the network that need to be seen quickly? And another question, is our network traffic segmented properly from our POS traffic? In many cases, it's not. And so it's important to at least get some understanding from myself and Jason on what that properly segmented traffic should look like. Next, I encourage you to engage with your POS provider to complete a software as a service evaluation form. If you do not have one of these forms, I can provide one to you after the session along with the recording from the session. It's important to understand the POS application itself. Where is data stored? Who is your POS company subcontracting to process the actual transactions? And where do those data centers live and who is maintaining them? How often are the operating systems on your terminals updated? And what type of malware protection is being provided to those terminals from your POS provider? I have a copy of the software a service valuation form, again, which we'll happily share after the session. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about physical access. According to the Verizon 2017 Data Breach Investigations Report, human error was involved in 65% of successful breaches in 2016, providing cybersecurity basically in this sense. It's not just a technology issue, it's a human issue as well. End users are the first line of defense against cyber threats. Owners must restrict employees from areas where there is direct access to the firewall and the cable modem and minimize their contact with other areas where network equipment and switches are kept. It is best to have cameras on terminals and IT closets. Wi-Fi passwords need to be changed regularly, and only managers should have access to Wi-Fi passwords and POS traffic lanes. There should be some type of policy for employees using personal devices on the network, and that's really important to have something like that in place. It is your IT provider's responsibility to monitor the traffic on the network, to ensure that malicious behavior and credit card skimming is restricted or quickly identified and then restricted. Owner devices, so this is definitely a rising subject. The threat landscape means the total of all various ways that someone can penetrate a network or a computer's security. The threat landscape is constantly evolving every month, every week actually. New hacks are out in the space today. There's a lot that has happened in just the last two weeks out there globally. And hackers are finding innovative ways to get into our lives, and they have made restaurants targets. So the sophisticated hacker code of today is often missed by antivirus and malware programs that come free with your computer when you purchase it. Your IT provider can offer protection to the owner computers and mobile devices and ensure safety and continuous backup of critical information. Your IT provider can also ensure that vulnerable commonly used applications, PDF, Word, Excel, all receive their automatic updates routinely. Achieving compliance is really a key combination of different activities that need to be made in effort to reduce your overall risk for a data breach. Understanding network security is very important. We offer the PCI compliancy checkpoint to anyone who's attended today's session. Again, we'll also share that recording at the end, and I'll let Jason talk more on that as we go to the next session. We can help you identify issues with network configuration, review best practices for physical access, and review personal protection of owner devices. So let's talk a little bit about the risks. Um, risks are everywhere. In today's threat landscape, there are many points of entry. So POS system traffic must be protected on the network. 
The POS systems themselves must be constantly updated with latest operating systems and industrial-grade antivirus and malware protection agents. Cloud-managed networks are really the best way to ensure protection against credit card skimming and malicious network activities. And when I meet a cloud-managed network, I'm talking about companies like Cisco Meraki and others that back their products with a team of people making constant updates, upgrades, and monitoring your network, which helps administrators like myself stay on top of malicious activities on the network and minimize your impact. Another common method we've seen a lot of um, in the last year or two is phishing. Um, some of the biggest companies out there are uh, susceptible to phishing attacks, and phishing is fake websites that look like real websites. Uh, for example, Apple has had a bit of struggle with that, um, and also Apple iCloud uh, has suffered some vulnerabilities, um, people getting emails saying it's time to up update their iCloud preferences. Unfortunately, some of those emails don't come from Apple. So you want to take a close look if you're using Apple personal devices or any iCal events that you get that are not solicited. So if you see something someone inviting you to something in your calendar and it's not somebody you know, do not accept the invitation. I've also seen um, Wells Fargo looking websites. Um, Google has had its share of hacks in the last year or two as well. So really it, everyone is uh, susceptible, even really large companies and all of us are using these tools in our daily workflows. So again, I want to really point out phishing. There are 33 million malicious URLs on the internet today. That's a lot. And companies like Meraki and others are constantly adding known malicious URLs to their firewall blacklists. Again, that's the, one of the benefits of a cloud-managed firewall is the team of people doing things in the background to help make that environment more secure. The problem is that these malicious URLs are often redirected and moved around on a daily basis by these hackers, which makes it harder for authorities to track down the bad people. It's almost impossible. And you, everyone here, we have uh, statistically a 92% chance of visiting a phishing website by accident within the next calendar year. So. That's a pretty staggering statistic, but it is true and it is accurate by all of our security expert teams. And as of last week, there's a new wireless hack that's out there attacking one of the most common Wi-Fi protocols used in many businesses, uh, 802.11R. So it's not something that most people would know, what is my Wi-Fi network protocol? But if you don't know and no one's maintaining your Wi-Fi network, how are you going to get protected from these types of breaches? So I really want to stress that this is a new type of hack that nobody in the security industry has seen. So over the course of the last two weeks, all of the major uh, firewall companies have been administrating firmware updates to help minimize risks to customers using those particular kinds of Wi-Fi access points. So let's uh, turn tables. I wanted to talk a little bit about malware and mobile. So Android devices within the last year have seen a staggering amount of malware apps out there. Uh, again, really wanting to make sure that any mobile devices you're using for POS are managed properly, that no um, unneeded apps are downloaded. Um, you'll want to also make sure that your employees bringing personal devices to work are not using your POS lane of traffic for their mobile devices because that can create some problems and it is a security risk for you. Social media hacking has also become increasingly popular. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, lots of hacking going on out there and it's really hard to spot. Typically it's somebody pre presenting themselves as somebody else that you know already and trying to get you to click on something or update a password Again, there's a lot of risks out there, so we're happy to tell you more about what you can do to be safe. Email hacking is very common. It always has been. All it takes, again, is for someone that you know who's had their email hacked for that person who hacked it to have your email address. So you'll continually see that someone trying to impersonate that person that you know. Um, again, another reason to make sure you have 
industrial strength uh, protection on your computers that you use that has your sensitive business information as well. Pay close attention to things you plug into your network. So digital Wi-Fi marketing, access points, streaming music devices, or Apple TVs, Sonos, all of these need to be per behind the firewall and in place so that they're not broadcasting extra Wi-Fi networks in front of your firewall and then thus um, exposing your network traffic to yet another network as your information leaves and goes out through your cable modem. So uh, we're happy to answer questions regarding network configuration if you have any doubts. So if you do not have an IT provider, certainly Focus Connect can help. We can be a great asset to your restaurant organization, offer a peace of mind, and help work with you as you grow and expand your locations. We offer several services from the ground up, including cabling, audio visual setups, network security, wireless, VoIP phones, which can save you money, and secure mobile apps. Uh, find out how to use your network to actually save you money and keep customers coming back through the door. This is what we do every day. As a benefit to our Colorado CRA members, we're offering a free PCI compliancy consultation um, for the first, I think it's 20 that have attended today's session. So we'll be reaching out to you with the recording and more information. And now I'd like to turn things over to Jason to talk about how to mitigate your risk when a data breach does occur. Jackie, thank you. As she mentioned earlier, today's session, uh, we will have a recording available to you after the webinars. There's just a lot of information to process and for the fact that we will be providing you with a free cyber risk assessment uh, for the first 20 participants uh, that signed up today. Let's get started here on why cyber. The internet was built with the intent of sharing information, and it's always been a very difficult thing to secure. The first cyber policy was written in 1997 through AIG. This is when the change in accountability began to take place for business owners. It was a third-party liability policy only, and I'll talk a little bit more the difference between third-party and first-party, and it was basically what they referred to as a hacker policy. And the subsequent 17 years know that the Internet use has grown from 1.7% of the global population in 1997 to an amazing 48% of the global population in 2016, resulting in dramatic changes since the first cyber ins insurance policy was written. As of April of this year, 48 states have privacy laws requiring prompt notification if personally identifiable information that is not encrypted is lost, stolen, or disclosed. Failure to comply with the privacy law can lead to significant fines or penalties levied by either state or federal agencies. We will provide you with a copy of the Colorado Revised Statute listed here in this slide after the webinar for review. Many times restaurant owners believe their POS, merchant services, and IT companies have their best interest at heart. However, this is just the opposite with many of these companies as it relates to the service level agreements that they have with each of your restaurants. If you reviewed them, you would find many gaps within these agreements that would not actually protect you if you sustained a data breach of a cyber attack. On the right side of this uh, presentation, you'll see a little comment box or a chat box down there. At the very bottom, if you could just type a Y or an N in the chat box, if you have reviewed your service level agreements with your third-party vendors, that will just kind of give us an idea if, uh, if you have um, or if you're even aware of these service level agreements with those uh, particular vendors. One thing that we always try to let restaurant owners know is, is that make sure that you review these agreements and ask those questions that need to be asked to each of these providers to see what protection they have in place in the event that you are a victim of a data breach or a cyber attack. However, keep in mind, safeguarding a restaurant's data is a process and not a one-and-done plan. 
it's also your responsibility to safeguard that data that you're transmitting from your restaurant to those merchant services. Data thieves are constantly probing for ways of overcoming these security measures. You have to be just as diligent in thwarting them. The current landscape has shown that 50% of all businesses have been exposed to either a data breach or a cyber attack. To get a better understanding of why cyber, I'd like to go over the most recent cyber statistics in the hospital industry. You can see on this slide, um, the average time to identify a breach in the hospitality industry is 191 days. After that has been identified, it takes an additional 70 days to get that breach contained. So you can see it, it, on average, it can take almost an entire year to identify the breach and to contain the breach. And then keep in mind that the breach of each one of those records costs on average $124 per record. So if you took the number of credit card transactions that you do on a monthly basis and get yourself up to the number of days of 261 days, you can see how expensive this can become um, if and when a breach occurs within your restaurant. The other thing, keep in mind that 65% will permanently close within six months of a cyber attack or a data breach. That is a substantially high number when you're looking at all the time and effort that you have put forth in your business to ensure that you're doing what you are passionately designed to do. And know that right now, as of 2016, at the end of 2016, only 29% of restaurants actually purchased a standalone cyber policy. Therefore, we've partnered with a company out of Illinois that created a cyber liability program specifically designed for the McDonald's and IHOP franchises. Knowing that this program would be a robust and have a broad coverage form to protect the best interest of your client base. This, this program I'm going to go over in much greater detail in this next slide. This is a standalone program that picks up not only first party cost, and first party costs include such things as forensics investigations, business interruption, extortion, computer data loss and restoration, but it also picks up third party cost. And if you recall, in the very first policy that was written by AIG, it only picked up third party cost. So those third party costs would include economic harm, network security, and privacy liability, employee privacy liability, as well as electronic media liability. So not only are you getting third party in this particular program, but you're also getting first party. That's the important component of the particular program that we offer to our restaurant owners. As I spoke to you earlier in uh, the previous slide, there are 48 states that are now required to notify all individuals affected by a data breach. Therefore, when a breach occurs, no one ever really knows who to call upon. However, within this program that we offer, there's only one phone call you have to make. And our program has a breach response team to act on your behalf once notified. So all you have to do is pick up the phone, call that telephone number, notify them that you believe you have had a breach, um, and at that point in time, those individuals will go to work. And how they go to work is, is that they actually coordinate the IT experts, specialized attorneys to help you establish what's been compromised. They're going to assess your responsibility. They're going to notify those that you actually have to. The notification is required when personally identifiable information has been compromised. In addition, not only will they deploy all the right people, they will also coordinate credit and or identity monitoring for all your customers that have been breached and PR advice to help you safeguard your reputation after the breach. The program also, of course, indemnifies your losses from lawsuits or regulatory actions, the risk of which may be reduced by a well-coordinated breach response but can never be completely eliminated. This webinar is one way we are educating the hospitality industry, and we believe that by retaining some of your risk through education, such as this webinar, and through the 30-minute um, free risk 
assessment of your restaurant that you are, you will be better prepared for what may come of any data breach or cyber attack. And we plan to continue these webinar series and provide more news articles related to the topic through the Colorado Restaurant Association newsletter. Keep in mind, if a data breach costs you even one loyal customer, I consider that, and I, 